The preservation of the hadith and the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam may God's peace and blessings be upon him and we're going to examine today how the scholars of Islam have painstakingly preserved and authenticated the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad. How important the Sunnah and the example of the Prophet Muhammad is in understanding the religion of Islam. It's really essential to it. In fact, we find that many of the most important and essential basic acts of worship in Islam would not be fully defined just by reference to the Qur'an. The only way that we know about these things is through the preservation of the example of the Prophet Muhammad. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. Now, first of all, sometimes we find that people have not fully comprehended the importance of the Sunnah of the Prophet. What is this? Sunnah of the Prophet. What do we mean by Sunnah? Well, the word Sunnah in Arabic means way. It's the prophetic way. The way that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, the things that he said, the things that he did, and the things that he approved of, all of this is called the Sunnah. And the Sunnah is preserved in what is called the Hadith. Hadith means literally story. The Quran is also referred to as a Hadith. In fact, it is the best Hadith, the best story, the best narration. The sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad is recorded in the Hadith. So the Hadith is the term for those things or those writings in which the actions, the sayings, the approvals of the Prophet ﷺ were recorded. Now there are numerous books of hadith because of course there are so many things that the Prophet Muhammad, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, said and so many things he did. We have to remember that the message, the messengership and the prophethood of Muhammad lasted a period of 23 years. 23 years of what the Prophet did, what he said, what he approved of. So there are of course so many narrations, so many hadith of the Prophet Muhammad. And the whole issue of the hadith is compounded by the fact that many people after the death of the Prophet Muhammad, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, began to fabricate and began to invent lies about the Prophet. Also, rulers tried to justify their actions, sometimes their wrong actions, by invented hadiths and sayings of the Prophet Muhammad. So, what developed in the Muslim world, and we're going to talk about that, is a science through which and by which we could distinguish what are the true and what are the false sayings of the Prophet Muhammad. And all of this gives us added conviction that when we talk about the religion of Islam, we're talking about something verifiable. We're talking about something authentic. We're talking about something about which we have a scientific, verifiable process through which and by which we can know what the Prophet Muhammad said and what he didn't say. By the way, people were able to do this with the hadith or the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad in a way that they were never able to do with the Qur'an. First of all, the Qur'an was memorized in its entirety by thousands of Muslims from the earliest days of Islam. Also, in terms of its text, as we have already mentioned, it was compiled and collected and collated 
from the earliest days of Islam. So if anyone wanted to make a different interpretation of Islam, if any deviant sect or group or ruler or individual wanted to justify something by the Quran, they were never able to invent a new verse or introduce a new ayah or verse of the Quran. It was impossible to do that because the text of the Quran had been established from the very earliest days of Muslim history and it was agreed upon unanimously by everybody. This was not the case with the hadith or the sayings of the Prophet and we can say actually it is true until today we still have numerous books of the hadith of the Prophet and we do not have any single book where all of the authentic hadith of the Prophet have been compiled in one place. We do have a collection of hadith that is rigorously and highly authenticated and it is considered to be the most authentic textual reference in the religion of Islam after the Quran and that is known as Sahih al-Bukhari. The next most authentic collection is Sahih muslim The Quran says many times, O you who believe, obey Allah and obey the Messenger. In fact, the Quran itself stresses the importance of referring to the Prophet Muhammad, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, many, many times. Indeed, in one particular verse, Allah swears by himself. Nay, no, by Allah, they can have no faith. Their faith is not true, it's not real, unless they make you, Muhammad, a judge in all disputes between them and find no resistance in their hearts and submit with the fullest submission. In this verse, Allah is making it very clear that if a person is truly a believer in Allah and a believer in the last day, they will make the Prophet Muhammad a judge in their disputes and they will be happy with his decisions. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that whatever the Prophet gives you, you must take it. Whatever the Prophet orders you to leave, you must leave it. The Quran tells us that the Prophet Muhammad did not speak from his own desires. It is nothing except a revelation that has been revealed. So these references in the Quran make it absolutely clear that the Sunnah the example of the Prophet Muhammad is an intrinsic part of understanding the religion of Islam. Now let's look at some of the ways in which the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad has been preserved. First of all, for Muslims, the Prophet Muhammad is the best example of how to be as a human being. In fact, the Quran references that in the 33rd chapter of the Quran in the 20th ayah the Quran tells us the meaning of which is verily most certainly in the messenger of God is a most excellent example for anyone who believes in God and the last day so Muslims of course they believe in Allah and they believe in the last day the day of judgment the accountability the hellfire the paradise they believe in that so therefore, they will try their best to emulate the example, the manners, the behavior of the blessed Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Sunnah, the example of the Prophet, was applied in people's lives. It was not only memorized in the sense that I heard the Prophet say this, I saw the Prophet do that. They themselves applied it practically. For example, the Prophet Muhammad, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, said, if it wasn't a burden, if it wasn't going to be such a difficult thing for my nation, I would have made the use of the tooth stick, brushing the teeth, an obligation upon the Muslim nation. And the Prophet himself used to frequently use the tooth stick. He used to use it in the morning, in the evening, before he came out of the house, before he prayed. 
and his companions practically followed that example. And that practical example was followed by their children. And that was followed by their children. And so they would say, well, we saw the Prophet Muhammad do this. And we saw the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do this. And this is what he told us to do. So it is not, remember, it is not merely memorizing some academic thing. It's an actual practical application in one's everyday life. So this is one of the ways in which the Sunnah of the Prophet was preserved because people began to invent things and they began to invent sayings about the Prophet. So some of the companions, they said, okay, we will not accept any more anyone coming along and saying, I heard the Prophet say this, I heard the Prophet said that. No, we want to know which companion of the Prophet Muhammad did you hear this from? And then they would go and check from this companion. Did you say this? Did you hear the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say that? And if they discovered that the person was a liar and they had invented a lie, they would tell everybody. They would make it known publicly. This man lied against the Prophet. Don't believe him. He's a liar. And one of the most strong hadith of the Prophet that is through a mutawatir transmission is that whoever lies about me intentionally let them put their seat in the hellfire. And this is where the chain of narrators developed. And from that, the scholars started to study. Did this person meet that person? Was he truthful? Was he honest? Did he have a good memory? Was he a pious person? They began to check the character and the personality of every single person in this chain of narrators. And they did this in order to authenticate and make sure that every person in this chain was trustworthy, that either these people in the chain had met each other and had learned this hadith from each other. And they did all of this to ensure that there was a process in place through which and by which we could determine who and what were the things that the Prophet Muhammad, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, what did he really say? And what are the things that we have some doubts about whether he said it or not? And what things that, you know, have been invented and lies attributed to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Of course, this is really a very huge and extensive subject. It's really a science. It's something that people have dedicated their whole lives to, is to studying the science of the transmission and the accurate and authentic transmission of the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad. But of course, there have been scholars throughout the ages, Muslim scholars who have dedicated their lives to this science. And they have compiled books, authentic books, like Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih al-Muslim and the Sunnan of Abu Dawood and the Sunnan of Nasa'i. There are anyway a number of collections of books and they have been authenticated by the scholars of the hadith. So like I say, it is a very extensive subject, but all of this is to assure us that when we say a hadith of the Prophet is authentic, it's sahih, you can be sure that is something the Prophet Muhammad really did say or he really did do.